Hi, good morning. My name is Linda Baker, and today I want to talk to you about trees and think about how trees are depicted in the Bible. Trees hold an immense significance in Christianity, inter intertwined with biblical narratives, teaching, and imagery. From the creation story to the life and teachings of Jesus Christ, trees in the Bible symbolize profound spiritual truths, and these biblical trees can offer valuable lessons for all of us. Why are trees referred to in the Bible? My opinion is, is because we have trees all around us. In most parts of the world, people are familiar with trees in every country and environment. It's something we can relate to and understand. The significance of trees is first evident from the book of Genesis. Genesis 2.9 states, And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to, to the sight and good for food. Two significant trees featured in the Garden of Eden are the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The tree of life represents eternal communion with God and the gift of immortality. However, the tree of knowledge of good and evil presented, presented a choice between obedience and disobedience. We have choices to make every day. Some of those choices are easy and some of them are tough. The choices we make have incredible consequences in our lives, sometimes for good and sometimes not so good. Throughout his life and ministry, Jesus often employed trees in nature to convey spiritual truths. For instance, Jesus spoke of the mustard seed, emphasizing the power of faith and its potential for significant growth. The fig tree used by Jesus to illustrate lessons of faithfulness and bearing fruit became a symbol of spiritual fruitfulness and genuine discipleship. There are more than 36 trees that are mentioned in the Bible in the Old and New Testament. Here are a few more examples. In numerous parables, Jesus employed the imagery of trees to convey essential teaching. The parable of the sower and the seed likens the receptive heart to fertile soil where the seed, which represents God's word, takes root and produces a bountiful harvest. The parable of the vine and the branches emphasizes the significance of remaining connected to Jesus, the true vine, to bear spiritual fruit. These parables serve as reminders to Christians of the importance of spiritual nourishment, steadfastness, and dependence on Christ. The cross, often depicted as a tree, holds central importance in Christianity. Just as a tree provides shelter and sustenance, the cross symbolizes the sacrifice of Jesus, offering salvation, forgiveness, and reconciliation with God. Jesus used a fig tree to describe his second coming in Mark 13. In Romans 11, the Apostle Paul used the olive tree to explain salvation and the people of God. Both Jew and Gentile separated people for, for millennia come together now as one in Christ. The ability to graft branches into the olive trees illustrates how two diverse groups became united. There is a legend about the tree in which the cross was made for the crucifixion of Jesus. Legend has it that the cross was made from a dogwood tree. God decreed that the dogwood tree from that day forward, after the crucifixion, would never grow large enough to be used to make a cross. It would remain a smaller tree forever. In the Old Testament, Psalm 1, 2-3 tells us that drawing nourishment from God's word makes one like a strong tree. The path towards success from God's perspective is best understood by delighting in the law of the Lord and observing a thriving tree. In Proverbs 3.18, wisdom is a tree of life that will lead to blessing. The righteous are compared to palm trees and the cedars of Lebanon in Psalm 94.12. The palm tree refers to the date palm, a desert tree, while the cedars of Lebanon were the tallest and most massive trees in that region, located in the mountains north of Israel. Despite these differences, both trees are picturesque, strong, and long-lived, a fitting metaphor for a godly life. When you are amazed at the beauty of the forest or perhaps a tree in your yard or neighborhood, what should you do? You should worship. 
Trees lift their limbs in praise to their Creator, and in doing so, point us to God. Psalm 96.12 states, Let all the, of the for, trees of the forest sing for joy. In Isaiah 55.12, All the trees of the field shall clap their hands. I love this imagery. We can certainly witness the many trees in our area reaching to the heavens with, and with all the wind, I now imagine them clapping. When I think of trees, I think of stewardship and was surprised to read this in the United Methodist Church Book of Discipline. All creation is the Lord's and we are responsible for the ways in which we use it and abuse it. Water, air, soil, minerals, energy, resources, plants, and animal life and space, space are to be valued and conserved because they are a part of God's creation, and not solely because they are useful for human beings. God has granted us stewardship of creation. We should meet these stewardship duties through acts of loving care and respect. Thank you.